To quickly get on to it without further ado, um, we started yesterday looking at the situation, the banditry, the violence uh, in uh, the northwest uh, uh, of the country. And um, well, now we're sort of broadening the subject a bit and adding a bit more to it. Uh, we look at bad governance, poverty, and banditry in northern Nigeria. That's, you know, you can see it's been enlarged a bit, and uh, that's something that we could explore. Um, what is the link? What's the nexus between bad governance, poverty, and banditry in northern Nigeria? Well, we have two guests. Uh, number one, Alaji Mohamed Tukur, former Deputy uh, Secretary General, Airline Operators of Nigeria. Um, he will be joining us remotely uh, via Zoom. Uh, but in the, uh, and, and in the studio here, we have uh, Mr. Onyekachi Adekoya. Mr. Adekoya is a security and defense consultant, as well as being the CEO of Aquiline Intelligence. Thank you very much, Mr. Adekoya, for coming on the program. Thank you for having the, me. I'm indeed. To the listeners. Indeed. And um, uh, as I was still marveling at the name uh, Onyekachi Adekoya, uh, that you've been used to it drawing comment over the decades, you said that actually there's a middle one. There's a, there's a middle Nupi name, but... Uh, there's a middle one, and that is Nupi. Don't, don't let us compound it. So don't... <laughs> <laughs> You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Talk about well. a complete Nigerian. So, um, so as I said, it's not really a laughing matter, is it? Um, security in Nigeria, especially in the north. We, so let me just go into it. The, especially as you are a security and defense consultant, you must have studied the issue. To your mind, is there a nexus between bad governance, poverty, and banditry in northern Nigeria that is giving all of Nigeria a problem now? Uh, thank you for the question. I think you have asked a convoluted question. It's not as um, simple as it seems. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, it's almost like a scholastic uh, mm. uh, thesis mm. that one would have to solve. And I reckon that there are a number of um, research work being done out there. Um, so you talk about bad governance, you talk about banditry, you talk about bad governance and um, poverty. Yeah, yes. Um, typically, you want to say where there is bad governance, there tends to be anarchy and a resort to self-help, uh, which would then bring people like us in when you talk about uh, public order mm -hmm. and public safety. Mm -hmm. um, the jury would seem to suggest that without public order, you cannot achieve public safety. That's right. So, um, for example, if you look at the criminal justice system and you say, okay, how well does it work? How well is it resourced? What are the challenges we have with our criminal justice system in Nigeria? We've had cases of um, courts and judges being overwhelmed. Um, the outgoing um, chief justice of Nigeria also complained about um, the many cases that the Supreme Court justices have to deal with and how that the court is getting a bit overwhelmed. So, that's a criminal justice perspective to a wicked problem. Now, the criminal justice finds itself within society. What are the other problems within society? And perhaps that's where bad governance, bad governance comes, comes, comes in. in. Um, some, some have argued that Nigeria perhaps um, operates a kakistocracy, which means that um, we are typically not being led by the best of us. And... Um, the truism there is that people cannot give what they do not have. Mm -hmm. um, and if we do have a kakistocracy, it means that we have a number of um, societal imbalances within the society. And, you know, that will begin to raise head and manifest in the symptoms that you see um, as insecurity. I mean, we've had a long drawn argument this morning, even within the security sector, mm -hmm. as to the case in Zamfara of a a, a, of a, at a military checkpoint where the military, some military personnel um, shot and killed a police officer. And then somebody was saying that the high senior officers in the army and the police are trying to work on a relationship to improve this um, intelligence collaboration, but it seems as though the people down the ladder are not doing their part. And I said, the, the problems are not the problems of the Nigerian army or the Nigerian police. The problem is, is the Nigerian problem a situation that makes the exception the norm, that brings the police and the military into the same theater and space of oppression mm -hmm. 
would always create a conflict. The military is not suited for internal security operation. Exceptionally and within limited deployment, you can bring in the military. Uh, so when you don't have state police, you have to bring in the military to support the police, which is the federal police. So we have a number of structural imbalances in governance, and it cuts across everywhere, educational sector, our value system, you talk about the National Orientation Agency, you know, how are we even orientating ourselves as a people, you know, and how are we conscientizing ourselves to the values that we espouse. We've seen a rework of the national anthem, all tilting towards that. But uh, classically, what Nigeria suffers from is a hydra-headed, multifaceted problem, which we term a wicked problem. So it's not just bad governance. Yes, there's been bad governance over the years since independence. Even um, some might argue before independence, mm -hmm. you know, up until this point. Because if you look at the successive riots we have had, the Abaya women's riot, the Metasini riot, one way or the other, these riots are linked to bad governance, economic um, oppression, and access to uh, basic amenities and things that encourage the uh, realization of self-aspiration. So we, the, and, the system is a bit uh, And bulk. inevitably, these things that you're talking about, uh, they actually lead to uh, poverty. Yes, and you know. then, you know, and that poverty leads and to resentment, yes. which leads to restiveness, yes. Yes. which then leads to vices, mm -hmm. which then leads to so many things. And there's always a privileged class that seems to be immune from all of this, let it be said. Uh, I wouldn't know if there is such a uh, class that is immune because in the current state Nigeria is right now, I think everybody is feeling about the heat. The senators can go to their villages oh, freely. Well, the but at least they are not poor. Uh, poverty is relative. Okay. We have a lot of decorated poor people in Nigeria. Okay, okay. I will, I'm sure we'll return <laughs> to the point. Um, Alaji Mohamed Tukur, the former Deputy General Secretary, uh, AON, Airline Operators of Nigeria, is also one of our guests this morning, as I said. And I believe that, um, uh, Alaji, you're better ready for us now. We had a few technical issues uh, beforehand. So, um, good morning to you, Alaji Mohamed Tukur. Well, I was advised that... Um, Alaji Mohamed Tuko is ready for us now. Uh, I guess we're going to still have to keep our fingers crossed because I know uh, you would have responded if indeed you could hear us. That was the nature of the problem we had before. Uh, we, we've seen you. We've seen you. We've uh, actually spoken. Um, but there was a difficulty in your hearing us, and that can't work. Okay, but so we're still going to be at it, and um, as soon as Alaji... Mohammed Tukur can hear us, he will join us. Um, now, this danger here is that what is going on in northern Nigeria, in case people are wondering that those are words that we say, uh, bad governance and poverty uh, and banditry. You see, the, people, the, the last protest uh, that we had in this country, it seemed that in the north, because the like never before, we have social media now. So we, we were seeing pictures, and those pictures were mind-boggling of um, fellow citizens, fellow human beings, uh, perhaps to a lot of people seeing those pictures, behaving in a way that was totally alien to them from their remote uh, locations, from where the pictures were showing. They just couldn't believe it. Uh, you... Uh, well, I, I still say that one of the most, um, shall I say, iconic memories that lingers on my mind is um, a youth ascending a traffic light pole and beginning to hack away at a traffic light with a machete. And y you begin to wonder, what, 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 what does this have to do with anything? Apart from ascent, and you saw there were so many youths clearly the uh, security forces, uh, forces of law and order were overwhelmed and were not in sight uh, as much as they should have been in that situation. Now, what does this say really about the scope, the nature of the problem and the potential, or shall I say, the, the opportunity to actually address it? Because it looked, it looked very much like a hopeless situation. Um, I th 
somebody once quipped and said um, that God must be a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I am beginning to share sentiments because what we saw in the Northwest was more or less the best case of what the worst case would have been. Because whatever it is we saw and we're lamenting, the real actors, the real disruptive actors were not in the play. They were not even in the fray. What you had was significantly juveniles. Yes. Um, people, tops under the age of 16, you know, um, to bracket age nine that went on rampage. These were not the political actors. These were not the political talks. Mm -hmm. These were not, uh, they didn't follow any pattern. They, although they seem to have been sequenced by some influence operators mm. and um, shown, you know, and given uh, flags. Uh, so, I mean, it, Kanu, for example, I mean, speaks to the thing that um, his um, Royal Highness Sanusi Lamido Sanusi has been talking about, about the Alamajiri system. Yeah. And um, you recall that he had no small issues with some political actors in the state, following which he was kicked out as emir. Um, so there are some social um, religious issues in the Northwest, but principally the bigger problem is um, with profound respect to the governors who are doing their best. Um, the Northwest is as the Southeast. The worst of the governors that we have, typically in Nigeria, you will see them within that bracket, either in the Northwest or in the Southeast. And um, I, again, I say that with very profound because respect. Because I was going to uh, yes, try and interrogate yes. the worst of the governors. I, I would, I would make the case. My mom is from Abia State, for example, until Alex Oti came on board. That state is a state that has been known to be owing workers over 11 months. We've had um, cases in Abia where you couldn't come out and, uh, you know, um, and voice opposition to the political okay. structure in the state, you'll be kidnapped. Okay. So it, we're, we're beginning to lean towards uh, the area. No, no, I'm... I'm, we're, I'm we're, we're talking about the bad governance aspect. Yes. So I, I mean, I'm trying to explain why you... Because most times in Nigeria, we deal with the symptoms. Governance is the problem. In some of these parts, local government structures are non-existent. Thank goodness that the Supreme Court has ruled on their finally and given voice to their autonomy. So let's begin to see... We talk about ungoverned spaces and places in different parts of Nigeria. Um, nature, they say, abhors a vacuum. If you have over 774 local governments within this territorial contraption that we have, mm. as bestowed upon us by the British, you know, and you don't have local governments in those spaces. There are places in the Northwest where the people pay protection money to Ansaro for their own protection. It is in Nigeria you see that um, they would kidnap DPO. It is vigilante and youths that go and rescue the DPO. Uh, I've been looking at the um, streams of information from the Northwest in the last three days. Zamfara, Katsina, some parts of Sokoto are currently under siege, constantly and repeatedly. Armed attacks upon armed attacks, armed bandits operation. So we see what it has been now. But do you know that this armed bandits issue, cattle rustling issue, has been there in the last 30 years? It's not new. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, the advent of social media. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You talked about the people who were chopping at cameras. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the level of education. So if we don't prioritize education, mm -hmm. what's the school enrollment in those parts of the country? So, and, and that also is a governance issue? No, that's, a big, that's a big societal issue. That's why I'm saying that. It's a hydra-headed problem. So the politicians, to get away with what they do, they either whip up the people with religion or ethnicity, and then you have people fight themselves over pittance while the real political class are getting away with blue murder, as it were. Now, to even learn this, it's only in these parts of the world that um, you will charge the president commander-in-chief of the Armed Forces of Federal Republic of Nigeria to be responsible for local government security. The primary role of the president is the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Internal security cannot be his primary function. And, you know, I've said several times on national TV, uh, and I do hope that the president succeeds, but he will fail if he continues in the path of his predecessors. The president cannot be responsible for internal security. And this is my point to the governors. Are you aware that the, the then President Buhari moved for the reworking of the Nigerian Police Act 
The governors kicked against it because they claimed that they didn't have the money to pay. Mm. Without the police acting as a force multiplier for the federal police, you would always have to fall to the military. The military has operation in over 30 states. The military is currently overwhelmed. So there are many sidedness to the problems. And, you know, um, thank God that this president has embarked on reform. But, again, what's our response to the reform? We talked about the subsidy removal and the reason for it. And the cabal, as it were, who are benefiting for the subsidy removal are kicking. And then people making all sorts of claims that there is still subsidy. Meanwhile, as a matter of fact, NNPC had been making a profit on fuel import into Nigeria for a long time quietly. Now, exchange rate apart, maybe the, the price of fuel is selling at market price without any profit currently. It doesn't mean that petrol is being subsidized. I saw somebody fly a kite that said that fuel should sell for about 1,000, 1,100 naira per liter when people don't even understand the maths of importation. So Nigeria is a very interesting place. Um, and, I, and I do think that there's a lot of um, reorientation and reform that has to take place. And this president is the right direction. But what must happen, because we're talking about security, is that we must push back security governance to the state government and to the local government. Because every sensible approach to security is local. Without security, there can be no prosperity, which is the point I've been trying to make. Indeed. And um, uh, thank you for, you know, dovetailing it onto the sub-national uh, you know, levels yes. of authority. Yes. Uh, oftentimes, everybody looks towards Asorok and yes. this is the president. Yet, you're not interrogating the governors. What are they doing to contribute to the solution of this problem? But I, I must take a break. I will be right back and uh, we'll include your calls as well. Do please stay with us. Watching Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Oguntoye. President Tinobu since he assumed office. We are on our way to progress. Six out of the eight APC federal lawmakers. I have a movement structure that is going to take back our party in Enugu State. Because this one I'm seeing is <laughs> tears by moonlight. It's not working. So I'm wondering what you think or who you think can stop him now. He doesn't own the party. One of the causes of inflation is because people cannot go to the farm. The government still needs to do more so that people can eat. I believe what clamoring for is more responsible use of social media. Not that people just go in there and think that they can say anything to anybody. Dinobu is not one who believes in the same thing. I mean, he wants to get it done. He will face it, he will get it done. Yes, the president, from inception of his administration, focused squarely on diversifying the economy and driving in investments to you know, cushion the effect of everything that we've seen, ranging from COVID-19 to the global commodity shocks, global financial crisis and all of that. I was privileged to have worked under a governor who believed in the system, who also built up the system, and I'm going to do the same. All right, that's our show today, everyone. Thanks for being a part of it. TVC News, first with breaking news. As Ondo and Edo decide, follow the votes, updates, and results. Our team of correspondents are spread across the states with live updates and analyses as results are declared. Stay with our round the clock coverage only on TVC News. Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica bringing you the news you would want to watch.
Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live at the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. Every second, every minute, every hour and every day, time doesn't just stick away. It's a countdown to political decisions that shape our world. This country must move in. Imagine the impact these decisions have on our lives. Some are consequential, others may leave us intrigued or baffled. You will have no better friend and partner than a year. Step in and... Okay, welcome back. And um, uh, we started the program off with uh, Mr. Yekachi Adekoya, the security specialist. And um, I had announced at that time that Alaji Mohammed Tukur, who is well known as a former Deputy Secretary General, Airline Operators of Nigeria. And um, this time he's joined us. Uh, Alaji, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, the subject matter is bad governance poverty, and their link to banditry in northern Nigeria. Um, let me just ask your impression. Do you see a link between bad governance and poverty? Do you see uh, that link between bad governance and poverty as well as banditry in northern Nigeria? Your impression, Alaji. Um, are you with me? Yes, we are with you, and I just heard you ask that question. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, can you repeat that question, please? Okay. I wanted to know what you think of the link between bad governance, poverty, and banditry in northern Nigeria. Is there a link? Yes. Um, it's very unfortunate that we find ourselves in this kind of situation uh, where, you know, the previous government in this country, they have not been able to do what they're supposed to do. Although you can't blame them because uh, every government come with their own uh, kind of arrangement, but unfortunately, they have not be, they have not been able to address the issue of uh, job creation, education, and so. so. Is that only the government? It has to do with the people themselves, especially uh, the uh, let's say other people who are having a kind of money and so on and so they are not helping matter when you are in the society especially in the northern part of the country people don't come to create a kind of uh, trainer or training and so on and so scholarship providing job opportunity for people is not only government if you look at the society Especially in this country, most of the people are just waiting to go to school, finish, and come and work in the government. We have a lot of land, we have a lot of things that to do. But we don't come together to say, oh, let's join hands and provide uh, what is necessary so that at least we can be able to educate our people and provide a job opportunity. Everybody depends on government. And now you have uh, some government official 
who are already in the government, all what they are interested in is their own pocket. They are not helping matter. Only a few of them that are, are doing what they're supposed to do. So that's one of the major problems. The issue of uh, having so many children, you see a man doesn't have uh, anything, having a number of children without training them, without anything, you see them inside the city, begging, and so on and so on. So by the time they grow in that kind of society, definitely you find it very difficult. You have, uh, they will become criminal in one or the other. So not that there is no good one, there is. But believe me, we are already overwhelmed, especially when it has come to the northern part of the country. I'm not saying every region has its own challenges. Uh, you look at the, well, let me put it, bandit tree. If you look at our people who are planners, if you see somebody from 40 years down to 30 now, as I'm talking to you, you see somebody in the bush, definitely you have to put it in your mind that it's a criminal. Before you even, before you even, you know, try to serve yourself. So now look at the situation we are. It's not only the plan, is you have other people. But believe me, 95% is our people. Indeed. Who are getting involved into this kind of problem. You know, and um, people can't but remember that this, the situation we have going on uh, in the north now is very, very much like what uh, Sanusi, uh, uh, Sanusi Lamido, you know, the emir of uh, Kano, uh, what he predicted um, that, look, there's a failure of governance going on, and um, this involves all sorts of things, including uh, uh, a lack of uh, care for education and all those kind of things, and that it is going to lead to anything but, you know, a good society, anything but good governance. It's like we had always been warned by the likes of uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. Um, I, I can't hear you very well. I don't know if you can speak a little bit louder so that I can hear the question. Yes, indeed, I can, I can try. The Emir of Kano, going back a few, you know, just a a few years, has always warned that the situation we find ourselves in, in northern Nigeria, was going to come to pass. And now, there's no, it looks like there's almost no opportunity for governance. The Emir had said that there was a lack of good governance going on, uh, neglect of education. Uh, but for his troubles, uh, we all know what happened. Now, here we are. And we're limiting this. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's just like what the Emir say, really. You see, the issue is at that time, one that is uh, somebody give, uh, you know, understand the situation and he explain nobody. It's just like what I say, nobody care to look at that particular advice. Believe me. And uh, we found ourselves in this situation, as I told you. Now, the only thing is how do we solve this problem? It's not a one-day issue. I mean, when you are, that's why sometimes you sit down, you look at what this administration is trying to put in place. And uh, when you have some people in the, in the northern part of the country or in the country, generally nobody wants to help. Uh, nobody wants to help. For example, now, look at the, the other the leaders, somebody is sitting down trying to blame a government which is just one year and a half. Do you understand? Not even giving uh, the government a time, you know, to, to do what they wanted to do. The government has a very good program, especially this particular government. I hope you are hearing me. We can hear you. Okay. So now... Uh, instead of them to come together, what we know, 
from 1979 down, you know, most of the politician, one one uh, uh, political party, they normally come together to assist the government. At the back door, they can do their campaign and accuse whoever they want to accuse. But the truth of the matter, they lock the door. It will affect everybody. You can't government a, a, a country when the country is already in a very difficult situation. But now, what they normally do, they just add fuel into the fire. Yeah. Do you understand? They are not ready to assist. They are not ready to give a very good advice for the government to do the right thing. Now they will go behind. What they are interested in is simple. If there is a bloodshed, then they will use this one, that particular bloodshed for the next coming election. Yeah. That's exactly what is going on. Okay. What well, one second? What one? Yes, indeed I do. One second, Alaji. Let me include Otumba Adebo, who has been waiting for a bit. Uh, he called him from Abekuta. Good morning, Otumba. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank, thank you for calling. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning to the guys. What yes. I want to say is, uh, until uh, until the government. The National Assembly, the government uh, makes sure that uh, free education is compulsory. Free education is compulsory from primary to secondary, from primary to secondary, or even university education in Nigeria. It will be like that, particularly for the for, for the southern uh, areas. It has always been like that. You see, nine, five years, four, four years old boy. We're roaming about to the south. You see, nine-year-old girl in the, uh, as uh, as wives, eh? as wives. Those, those are supposed to be in school. Those, those are not uh, happy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think the uh, the networks and lines are quite a bit challenging today. Uh, thank you very much, Otumba. I did. Uh, the, I, I think the crux of what you said was that education is a problem. And until it is made, as you, your suggestion is that, it has to be made compulsory uh, from at least primary to secondary school for us to know um, where we're going. So, yep, I, 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 would, I, I think we all understand that because we have a big problem on our hands here. And let me, bring, let me come back to studio with uh, Onyekachi. This is, a, this is a big problem, isn't it? Because take Sokoto, for instance. Yesterday, when we were discussing an aspect of this problem, our guest was saying that ordinarily logic forbids you from thinking of Sokoto, arguably the capital of Islam in Nigeria, to be a hotbed for all these kind of activities, terrorism, and all, all anti-progressive ideas. But that's what we do have. So what... How much of this is religious? How much of this is um, uh, cultural? And uh, how much of this is political? Um, I think you've, uh, you're asking a question in um, what I call geopology or geopolitics. It's a very broad question. Uh, if you say that the Northwest has never been awash in violence, you may be uh, overlooking the history of how the... Um, Usman Dafodio Caliphate, you know, how moved. the religion actually arrived. Not necessarily, because there's always been Islam in Nigeria, and arguably, Islam may have first touched base in the northeast, which is why if you follow the war between the Al Khanemis and you know the jihadists, and at the point they had to stop, uh, because the people in the northeast say we've had interaction with um, Saudi and Islam for a long time, and what you are advancing is a different form of Islam. You know, so, um, like I said, for over 30 years, we've had issues of armed banditry and the rest. The mm. problem is, you see, in the North, people would easily subscribe to the will of God. Ten people may die, and, you know, the same religion, it is the will of God. In the South, one person breaks a leg, and all hell gets, you know, gets less loose. So... There's some cultural um, thing going on in the north 
that allows the people to perceive or um, exercise more restraint, believing the best of their political class. Mm. And the political class understands the minds of the people mm -hmm. and does manipulate the minds of the yeah. people to their own benefit. Yeah. Remember when, the, when Obasanjo was president, the issue of Sharia came up. You ask, are these problems religious? Far from it. What's the ideology of ISIS? What's the background of um, Hamas? You heard President Trump claim that then Bar President Barack Obama was the <laughs> founder of ISIS. But, I mean, to his point, perhaps ISIS is the product of some influence operation. At the heart of the problems you see in the Northwest and the Northeast are economics. You see, wh whether they be jazz or they be um, ISWAP or Boko Haram, what was Boko Haram? Boko Haram was formerly a Komok boys. Boys used in the political circle then in 1999 to the next election cycle. If you recall, mm. 1999, 2003 were about the most bloodiest. In fact, the bloodiest election in Nigeria cycle was 2011. So our democracy is maturing. So these boys who they use, you have them in Adamawa now, they call them Shila boys. They are still there till tomorrow. So at the heart of this, it's not religion. It's not the Heda Fama crisis we think it is. You know, there are some other sinister asymmetric operation going on and watch where these things are happening. They are happening within our food belts. The head of our clashes are happening within our food, food region. The North East had the largest cattle population anywhere in Africa. You can't herd cattle there. Northwest cattle rustling, farmer header, systemically, Nigeria that used to have the granite pyramids and the food pyramids, has now become a beggarly nation not able to do, um, achieve food security. So there's a bigger war that we're facing, which seems like an asymmetric warfare yeah. on us. So I mean, what are the governors in the north doing is the question... A kakistocracy is what I've said. We are not led by the best of us. So you can, and you can't give what you don't have. People cannot give what they don't have. So people who do not understand the issues. Yes. And let me land on this. Uh, we, we do consult for a number of governors, okay. and they say that the Can governors. I come in... that because I want you to say that in full. Okay, uh, that's Amin, fine. Amino in Yola has been holding on for a while. Thank you very much, Mr. Amino, for holding on. Go ahead now, sir. Yeah. Mr. Yoli, good morning. Thank you. Good, good morning. Afternoon. Yeah, um, 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 I, Mr. Yoli Puchi have said it all. Yeah, because uh, uh, the, the the entire no, what is happening is exactly economics. We, we, our governors, our leaders must understand. It's not about building bridges. It's not about doing what they are doing. It's about building an economy. If there is no economy, there is no survival in the north. The, the economy of the north are cattle herding and uh, farming. That's the only business in the north. Anybody that is telling you any other semantics is only telling you what you want. But what are they doing about it? What have they done about it for the past 25 years? What have they done about it? There is no single, single cattle colony or whatever name they call it in the whole of North as a pilot project. No. How can you tell me the entire economy is relying 58% on animals and you are telling me you don't have anything to show about it in the whole of 19 northern states? Mm. I, we, 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 we don't have leaders. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Our leaders are building bridges. Who, who cares about a bridge when the, the people don't eat? When people don't eat, they can, be, they can be Boko Haram, they can be ISIS, they can be anything. Whatever name you can call them, they need to eat first. Any nation that is not self-sufficient in eating food, that nation cannot survive. Indeed. We must eat first. Yeah. The government at the state, at the national, at the, at the local government, most in terms of the realities of people must eat. That's the bottom line. Thank oh. you very much, Mr. Yori. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amino, and uh, for your patience as well. Uh, so let me, let, me, let me just sample um, uh, Alaji Tuka. Uh, Alaji Tuka, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. Okay. So hopefully you heard uh, those last contributions both from Mr. Dekoya and from uh, uh, Mr. Aminu in calling out of Yola. Um, are, are we stuck, uh, to paraphrase Aminu, we, in the North we don't have leaders. 
And in studio here, my guest, my guest has opined that you can't give what you don't have is a big issue worthy of consideration. Do we have leaders properly defined uh, in the North? Um, if I hear you very well, you, you said if I heard about uh, one Aminu? Yeah, I, I, I was saying how, how do you relate to um, the assertion that our governors have not lived up to their positions in the North of being leaders? Well, if I hear you very well, I mean, you are talking about how do we, how can we solve the problem? Or how do we, if I understand. Leadership, asking, leadership from the North, leadership from, well, leadership from among the see, governors and the local councils and the traditional rulers in the North. Is there? Thank you very much. You see, it's a very simple. Some of the uh, district head from the EMEA, let's say, from the Emerald Council in the various, uh, various states, especially, let me talk about uh, Kasuna, Zaria, and the rest. Do you understand? Okay. There is a lot of uh, thing going on. Take the governor of uh, Kasana, who is so, I mean, did a lot of things, you know, lead to the other local government, if you can hear me. We can hear you. Are you okay? Hello? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. So, the community, especially from the state government down to all the community, so what what we are doing, what we understand that what is happening, especially we who have come from some other area, that we have put ourselves together to make sure that everything, uh, all the town and the city, they have what they call vigilantes, and we are calling all the people there to come together and uh, defend themselves and they create a kind of uh, uh, a committee that they can be able to support themselves, just like what we are seeing what is happening in the East. Do you understand? All right. People can be able to contribute in one or the other. If the community can take one, two, three, four people, they can gather some kind of money to make sure that they have some people for training and so on. So the government is doing all what they can do, which we understand, but the problem is the community. Okay, let me bring on Ada. Okay, I, 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 thank you very much, um, Alaji. Ada in Jos, good morning. Your guest, your guest, especially the one in the studio, that's your next question. As I'm calling from those participants, I feel that the problem with Nigerian security, for me, it's not a question of saying uh, the north or the south, you know, it should be handled politically. The problem we're having is that uh, hunger is a very serious problem. You know, certainly uh, security is not just done with the barrel of the gun, you know. They let them, uh, 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 I mean, tackle it from the social economic viewpoint. So, well, 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 yes, people say that they're not uh, they're very uh, submissive to their rulers, but it's a time bomb waiting to explode. Any day their eyes open, it will be terrible. You know, so we want to get to that stage. You know, let them address those issues, the unemployment, illiteracy, all those things, address them. And then why can't they meet with such a guy? Let them do a coordinated kind of uh, listening uh, simultaneously. Uh, 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 that is uh, in, in all the states, especially the, the adjoining states. You know, the, the operation they are doing, this uh, forestry, sanitation, sanitation, or whatever they are calling sanitization, or whatever, it's a peace meal. You know, so when they do it in Zafar, they will now uh, have a escape route to go to the adjoining uh, state. You know, that even if it means Nigeria being still for one week, let us get serious. Then also involve the hunters. A lot of them bear the arms they're supposed to bear. Most uh, of the kidnappers... Uh, uh, okay, Adam, uh, we've run out of time. So, the hunters have been do done a lot. Th thank, so not thank you very much, Ada, for calling in. Um, we've completely run out of time. And um, it, because of this, I'd like to thank Alaji Mohamed Tukor. So sorry for the challenges that we had, but we appreciate your coming on the program as well. And uh, in studio here, Mr. Onyekachi Adekoya, are we stuck in this particular warp? Um, what is the hope? Everybody, the, the big question that we didn't get answered is the quality of leadership, of governorship in the North. What, 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 what is that? What is that all about? 
So I think we're singling out only the north, maybe for the reasons that occur. For, for, yeah, but for, to answer your question, are we stuck? Yes, we are stuck. Um, what's the rule of madness? If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you're expecting a different result, then um, and you know, as I say, sometimes we are very interesting people in Nigeria. So what I say is to round up, the president must lead as a political leader to bring all the governors to a vision that he sees for Nigeria and to help provide what is missing in terms of visioning. Mm -hmm and use his political capital to urge the governors in the direction they should be going. Well, thank you very much for keeping it that brief. Uh, Mr. Yekachi Adekoya, appreciate your appearance on the program. Thank That's you. That's our program today. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.